Hi everyone, uh, sorry we didn't put out a video on last weekend, uh, I was out of town. Just going to quickly go over a brief mid-market, mid-week market update. And I call this week's version the good, the bad and the ugly and why you need discipline. Uh, so I just wanted to go and get started. So let's go ahead and I have some setups done. So first we'll go through the markets and what they are doing. They have been ramping up nicely for the last week. Uh, every time there's a pullback, there's a buy-in and it's basically buy the dip and uh, the markets have broken some technical indicators to the upside. We don't see any short-term pullback yet. So let's go ahead and get to the chart right away. So here I have plotted a chart uh, of the Dow Jones and I want to show this chart because uh, we need to see where we think the market is headed. So if you look at it, I plotted it from basically 2014 to 2016 where we had the massive pullbacks and how the market has reacted to it. So let's go through a few of the technicals. Uh, there's one in interest, other indicator I've added to this chart you can see here. It's the Bollinger Bands. Uh, this is important because it tells you if the market has reached some sort of extreme. Now, the interpretation is interesting as long as the trend is up because the band can get really stretched and it works up a 20 day average. So it tells you it has a two standard deviation uh, from the 20 day average uh, bandwidth basically of this band. So that's why it's a, it works a lot of times, but then the interpretation can be um, misguided a little bit in the sense that you can say, well, look here, we are moving up, 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 and the market keeps touching the upside of the Bollinger Band, the, and though the market is not stretched. So you have to take this in the sideways market or an oversold market or an overbought market. Anyway, we'll just quickly go through and see what the market did in the past and where it's headed here. We had predicted 18,000, and sure enough, we saw that we had a nice you can see this A, B, C sort of move here, move up, move down, and then move up. So you typically have a nice move up and a pullback and then a takeoff, basically. We call this, a, I call this a takeoff. We predicted 18,000. We think the market will close around 18,000 this week. There are probably all kinds of strike prices set at 18,000 level. And the interesting thing you want to see is you can see this huge sideways market here. And then you had a pullback uh, sideways and a pullback. So you had a double bottom here uh, and the market took off. Well, what we expected was last week we had said we would short. Uh, two or three weeks ago we said we would stay short. But then things changed, right? You had a situation where the MACD had sort of turned right here. You can see here the moment it turned, uh, I changed my whole outlook and basically said, well, it's time to go long. And sure enough, once it crossed the 13-day moving average here, you knew you had to get out of all your shots. So why I'm calling it the good, the bad, and the ugly, because I had one or two ugly trades, and I'm glad I got out of them um, early enough that I was not burned by them. Uh, so I was, so let's look here. Anyway, let's get back to the Dow Jones. So you can see overbought conditions here, overbought here, a pullback, not an overbought, a downtrending market pullback, oversold, oversold, and now we are heading towards overbought. So you can see this particular trend line is broken to the upside on the RSI. In addition, the MACD is trending higher. And what that tells us is this market is trying to get to 18200. Uh, and we believe that is a very high possibility because everybody believes the Fed June hike is off the table and July might be in the picture and we believe this could be the um, bell uh, like a indicator of a rally or what I would call a summer rally. A lot of stocks are moving up nicely in the Dow Jones even though they are look overstretched. A good stock to watch in the Dow Jones is Triple M. I'm going to draw the chart for that. You can see it follows the Dow very very nicely. And you can see it hit a new high this week. There you go. It moved up here. So it was having a lot of resistance around 165. Moved up. Sort of went into sideways action. Tested 165. Never closed below 165 ever. And look at that. It broke out again today. 
and guess what the RSI trend line also broke we think the stock is going to 175 or higher so we like 3m here uh, you can see these type of moves you know in 3m um, the only thing we don't like is the volume action uh, I think there are few and fewer people piling into these stocks but hey you got to follow the trend so I want to go over briefly uh, next thing I wanted to go over was the VIX so I'll show here a chart of the VXX which we should have never it should be a part of a portfolio but you have to play it easy on this one you can see the VIX has been like getting clobbered this is a ETF for the VIX and you can see it's been getting clobbered 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 and it's just been going down 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 so what that means is complacency is picking up and um, you know people are getting very complacent puts are very very cheap right now and the premiums on puts are almost there is no premiums unless there's some volatility in the stock so stocks like Tesla would have high volatility so then you would have the puts with high volatility in that position so now you can see here look at here this RSI going all the way down below 20 I mean is that a possibility here um, I don't know right now but right now it's not bottomed out yet but in the way I look at it and neither has the volume picked up above its average so it looks like this is still trending down it may bounce around here uh, we'll have to wait and see I believe as the market goes higher uh, this will start sort of like going down and it's a, it, it's it's a position to be long straight next thing I'll go over is gold well last video we indicated we were extremely negative gold but interestingly right before the jobs report I had closed majority of my shorts in gold stocks uh, I was long dust which was a small ETF I had in my portfolio I, I decided to stay long that and I had one particular minor short because I did not like their fundamentals so I will show you here this is the position I was short and I am still short I think gold minor rally is not making any sense the reason I say that is their moves have been very long now don't get me wrong I still think they can move up because your MACDs are positive here um, but the rallies don't make sense I mean for example this stock has moved 10 to 20 dollars that's a hundred percent move in less than a span of two months and at the meantime gold hasn't not gold has not jumped 100 percent it's still languishing basically in a sideways action move between 1100 to 1250 now today we had a decent move in GLD you can see it's trending up RSI going up uh, we think this is going to 1225 to 122 around here and you can see the MACD just turned again positive so we think gold is heading higher so I'm going to have to sit with my position unfortunately I'm okay with that uh, what I may do is I may actually sell some puts against another stock like ABX um, and and watch that closely so again it's it's a very confused market is what I call it for me uh, in terms of gold so you can see here the stock spiked to 20 today but it closed almost at the lows of the day it was up about 40 cents which was a decent move I still think and then the RSI is still trending up but look at the volume the volume was below average on this move up very interesting and the MACD turned positive just now next thing I want to go over is my ugly trades um, so one of my ugly trades was gold not ugly bad trades and then the ugly trades was I was uh, short Avago uh, which uh, I should have never done that should never get emotional about a position um, and you can see it gapped up I did not cover my shorts so basically what I've done is I've written in the money puts uh, leaps is what I call it for a hefty premium and I collected that and left it in my account I'm willing to sit on this position for a year if that's what it takes and, and watch it closely but I'm not I'm sure short this stock and fortunately but I have to live with my decision and wait it out for a year um, then I wanted to show another trade that I followed um, I should have followed my discipline and I did not and that really put hurt me not badly but it was it was a position I was profitable in I should have closed it when I was making a profit and I got just a tad bit greedy and it hurt me I had made money in this position 
several times and I'll show you here Lulu uh, Lululemon they reported earnings this morning and the stock promptly took off an intraday chart it looked like it was going to take off and sure enough it did you can see here it moved up three and a half dollars today so I was short when the stock was in this position I started shorting and I was short 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 all the way through here and I made money on every trade I took then what happened was on this particular day I believe there was a earning support that came out from apply the market started turning and it was a Thursday Friday time frame and I decided I'll just stay within my position uh, for a small on Friday I decided to stay in the position I was making money on the Thursday position and I decided not to close it and I left my position open next thing I know I was holding the stock short I immediately decided to close it because I knew this trend had turned I took a small loss and I was okay because I'd made money all along this I took a small loss here and look at what happened the stock promptly went up and sure enough now it's getting overbought we think it's a breakout this could go to 75 bucks so that was my ugly trade so it's very important to follow discipline a uh, few other things I want to go over I'm already exceeding my time um, of, for my video and just want to discuss uh, one or two things here uh, you should keep an eye on the market here closely I think the Dow is headed to DIA just want to sort of give you a look on that we like it we think staying long is a good idea um, still stretched but very possible this is going to go up because look at the 13 is above the 50 and above the 5 and still trending higher and the RSI is trending higher so everything is positive right now for the market so we do not suspect anything in the short term to cause any type of market crash and one more few more trades I did cat we sold the puts we had called for a nice nicely we I'll show you why I sold the puts and I did uh, why did I do cat caterpillar there are a lot of stocks breaking out so please keep an eye on that uh, 3m is one of very good examples so we would look to go long caterpillar beautiful stock we were short close made money as soon as it started moving up I knew this stock was going to turn Look at the MACD started turning nicely. Stock shot up. RSI was bottomed out, moved up. We sold puts here. This expired worthless. And then we also sold puts on Deer. We like that stock at that time. Again, we'll show you why. Technicals are very, very important. And but you should follow discipline. Stay disciplined. Do not get emotional. I have learned my lessons the hard way on getting emotional and. It's, it is really, really difficult uh, when you get emotional about a position. So here we said, oh, it was bottomed. I sold some puts for like, I believe, 82 and a half. The stock moved up and I believe it's ripe for a pullback. Uh, the MACD sort of looks extended here. We would uh, look to, you know, sell some outside calls or look to get out of this position. Um, and one additional thing, please start pairing some of your longs as the market goes higher. Um, we think there is a you know it's a good time to sell some positions and take some money off the table one last thing I wanted to go over one more feature on the site um, we have improved some things here so we are going to be keep improving our site and we would really like you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also our site it's a mere ten dollars a month you can't cannot beat that and uh, oh here's I plotted an SPY chart and see the SPY is trending higher versus the HYG the high yield grade ETF you see is trending higher too there's a very tight correlation between these I want to show one quick feature of a buy sell signal on for example caterpillar and oh, what happened there that was not good uh, okay so let's look at a buy sell signal strategy on this Let's look at the fast signal and look at it. SPY, it put out a buy around 205. Today it's at 212. Beautiful. Now, on the short side, we have to be careful and learn how to do this. I want to show one quick feature screener. We've added a lot of screens. We're going to be improving this page a little bit more. Uh, it's not there yet. Here's a good feature you can look at this. We don't publish this report, but it is a good uh, trade. Um, 
report to generate uh, when you want to find something that's moving above average. So here we go. We'll do 10 means the volume is 10%. It's 50-day average volume. For Find me all the stocks where the volume today was 10% above its 50-day average volume. So I'll do a start scan. And quickly, it will get me the reports. It takes a little while because it has to go through over 7,000 stocks. And I'll show you quickly. Okay, here we go. We'll sort by volume quickly. Sort by volume again. And look at it. So this tells me all the stocks that had, and you can quickly check this by just doing this. Go here. Okay. I don't like below $1 stocks, so I never trade them. GDX. So you can see here the red line. Uh, I want to click on this. So you can see the in the volume section of this chart. I can't move to it because the mouse over is there. Look in the volume section of the chart where the volume is. So the MACD turned positive, but the volume is above its 50-day average. That red line is a 50, oh, it's a 60-day average. Oh, so so it obviously traded 10% above its 50-day average. So you can see all these stocks. Look at EEM. Very nicely moving up. PBR, this is going higher, we believe, as much as we do not like the stock. VRX traded, so this is still trending down. So you can quickly go through all these stocks, uh, you know, to run this report. Like, look at this stock, for example, Brazil Index. Looking nicely higher. Looks like it may, it's going higher here. Uh, Weatherford International. Closing above its 50. Looks like it's going positive. Volume traded above its 50 day average. Looks like a good long. Uh, this obviously no. And so you can quickly go through. Look at this AK Steel. Looking good. Breaking out. Uh, let's look at this actually where we think it might be headed. Let's look at the weekly chart for this. Quick. Um, let's draw that. Update. Oh, custom dates. January week update chart. Why I'm running at 17 minutes. So we think this stock could go to $6. Look at it. Uh, everything trending up, MACD trending up, and uh, we would keep an eye on this stock closely. Still, the PE is relatively high, so we would we'd be mindful of that. Anyway, I want to close today quickly. So, the gold is indicating trend higher. As much as I'm short some positions in gold, I'm just going to stick with them because I think the minor rally does not make any sense to me. Markets are going higher. I think 18,200 is our target, and the S&P is going to cross basically its old high, or at least tag it for sure, which is around 2130. 3M is looking very good, and uh, please check out uh, you know the other charts you mentioned, CAD, DE, and keep an eye on the VIX. It keeps heading lower. Uh, one more report uh, here quickly. I'm going to show on the chart. Uh, keep an eye on this report here, RSI less than 30, and also oversold with improving RSI. It's a good report to look at. You can see how small it is. That means every stock is literally doing very, very well. So anyway, wish you uh, good uh, trades this week and the following week. Um, you're just going to have to keep trading here. We sold some puts on Facebook today. Those seem to be making money and good luck and uh, please subscribe and let us know your feedback. Thanks.